Welcome to another video. What exactly are Fourier series all about? Well, I said Fourier and not Fourier series because I think it's a French word and that's how you're supposed to say it. If I didn't say it right, please leave a comment in the comment section. I promise you I'm going to learn how to say it correctly. But Fourier series is what I've been saying since I found out about the word Fourier series. Okay, what is this all about? See, some functions are so complicated, so difficult to analyze that if you found or if you can find another way to express them so that anybody, even a child, can look at this and say, oh, I know that it's going to be high here or the temperature is going to be low here or it's going to be um, average here, then you should use it. That's what scientists do. Make life easier easy. Fourier series make our lives easy because you can analyze complicated functions just because you've written them as the sum of terms of sines or cosines. So what we're going to do is try to rewrite x squared in terms of a sum of terms of sine and cosine. But in this example, I'm just going to stick to the Fourier sine series for f of x equals x squared. And once we have that, we can always move on and do other things. Okay, so that's the example I want to show. You can write it either in terms of sines, in terms of cosines, or as a combination of both of them. Let's get into the video. So one thing I must state, just as you know how to write the quadratic formula without you being prompted, you have to know how to write the formula for all sine series. Like what, what do you really need on, and for cosine also? You have to know them and then use the formula to find the series for whatever function you're looking at. So this is what happens. So generally, given f of x is equal to some function. We don't know what that function is. Let's call it phi of x. We can say that the Fourier sine series for phi of x will be equal to the sum of the terms of these sine expressions starting from n equals 1 to infinity of some constants. Okay, the constants change, okay? The first one might be one half, the next one would be three, the next one would be one over seven or one over five factorial. We don't know what they are, but these are what you call the Fourier sine coefficients, okay? So these are coefficients and what comes behind this is sine and then you're gonna say this is n pi x over l. Okay, now where does this L come from? This L comes from the interval we're dealing with for, watch this, this is for an interval from 0 to L. The length of the interval is what you call L, and that's it. So, you can see for the example that I'm dealing with, the value of L is one, so it's not going to cause any trouble for us. What else is there? That's it. And we know that our phi of x is x squared. That's it. It's not going to cause any trouble. So in order to use, so this is how you find the general Fourier sine series for any function. You must know this formula. And you must know that this is what the interval is from zero to L. If they give you from negative L to L, it means you have to fold it into and you have to double whatever you're dealing with. Okay, now let's try to answer this question. We know based on what we have done that x squared will be equal to, we go here, it is the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of b sub n sine, well since we know that this is 1, so this is going to be n pi x, n pi x, and we're done. That's it. 
We just need to know what B sub N is. <laughs> if we know what B sub N is, we're done. Now, there's a formula for B sub N, which I think I should add on this side. So note that B sub N is always equal to two over L times the integral from zero to L of the function that you're given multiplied by sine n pi x over L. Okay, I know, it looks like there are too many formulas, but it is the same thing we're recycling. This is still this guy here, which in our case, is x squared. So let me just write it out. So from here, we know that b sub n, which is the Fourier coefficient, okay, will be equal to the integral will be two over one, integral from zero to one of, this is our function. What is the function? x squared times sine of n pi x over one, okay? So which is our L in this case? So you can see that we don't need to write this one and we don't need to write this one. So we can actually rewrite this as just two. So this is two and we can just write this as n pi x. So I'm gonna make an attempt at integrating this using the di table. And I'm gonna write the answers under here and see how cleanly we can do that. Cleanly? How neatly we can do that. I'm not sure. Okay, so let's do the DI table. So we're going to differentiate and integrate because this is a polynomial and a trig function. I'm going to use the Liate rule because that works in this case. And I'm going to have x squared here. And I'm going to have sine n pi x here. So watch what happens. I'm going to differentiate x squared until I get zero. I'm gonna keep differentiating. I have two x and one more, I get two and then I get zero. And I have plus, minus, plus, minus. Now when I go up there, if I wanna integrate the sine of anything, it's usually the opposite. So from sine, I go to cosine, but I know that the integral of sine is negative cosine, but I'll be dividing by the coefficient, the derivative of what's inside, which is n pi. So it's gonna be negative one over n pi times the cosine of n pi x. I'm gonna do this one more time, but then this is gonna be squared. So. This is going to be negative because the, the derivative of the integral of cosine is sine, but it's positive, but so we retain the negative sign. So it's going to be negative one over n squared pi squared sine n pi x. Okay. And finally, we integrate one more time. This is going to go back to negative cosine and that negative is going to change this negative. So we're going to end up with one over n cubed pi cubed cosine n pi x. Okay, so that's it. Now we're going to connect this way. One, two, three. Because we got to zero, we don't need to go this way. And that's it. So that's what I'm going to copy here and say that b sub n will be equal to two multiplied by, now let's write out everything we've seen. This is x squared this is negative x squared over n pi. That's negative x squared over n pi. And then we have cosine n pi x, cosine n pi x. Nice. And then the next one would be minus times minus is gonna be plus. So that gives us plus two x over n squared pi squared sine n pi x and the next one is going to be this times this and it's positive okay so everything there is positive i'm going to uh, move it down a little bit and it's going to be plus 
So that's what we have and we need to evaluate from zero to one. Okay, something of interest. Whenever you're integrating something involving pi, you wanna pay attention to sine because sine does not know how to deal with pi. Whether it is zero pi or one pi or two pi, it will always be zero. So if you try to evaluate this, you will get zero in any case. Okay, so this middle term will always give you zero. So we don't really need to deal with that. What do we need to deal with? Let's evaluate this and see what we get. We're gonna evaluate this also and see what we get. Okay, so here, we know that the coefficient b sub n is gonna be two multiplied by Let's evaluate this from zero to one. Let's first try one. If we plug in one here, we're gonna end up with negative one over n pi. What, and then when x is one here, this is gonna become cosine n pi. Okay, now this is the part that confuses students. What is cosine n pi? Let's start, let's start with the smallest n, which is one. What is cosine pi? minus one. What is cosine two pi? One. Cosine three pi, minus one. Cosine four pi, one. So you notice that when n is even, you're gonna get a positive one. When n is odd, you're gonna get a negative one, which is the same thing as just raising negative one to power n, because when n is odd, it is negative, when it's even, it's positive, that's it. So every time you see cosine n pi, replace it with negative one raised to power n. That's what we do, negative one raised to power n. We're done with that. Okay, so we just solved, we just evaluated this at one. Let's evaluate now at zero. Let's go put zero here. Well, if you plug in zero here, it doesn't matter what you do here, this zero is gonna delete everything. So we're done with that. This has been evaluated from one to zero because it's now this minus zero. Now let's move on to this one, okay? So it's gonna be um, plus. This is gonna be two over n cubed pi cubed. The only part we need to deal with is this part, because this part is what has x. We don't have x here, that's why I quickly wrote the answer here. Okay, so now, when you plug in one here, what's gonna happen? So this is as if you factored it, so it's as if we factored this out. So cosine n pi is the same thing, because if you plug in one here, you're gonna get just cosine n pi, which is the same thing as negative one to the n. So it's negative one to the n. And then when we plug in zero, let's plug in zero. Remember, we're supposed to subtract. So plug in zero here, you're gonna have cosine zero. What's cosine zero? It's one. That's it. Now, if you don't want this two to be outside, you can put the two inside. So I can actually remove this two from the outside and use it to multiply each of these. So this is negative two and change this to four. And that's your b sub n. And we're done. Remember I told you, for the cosine, for the Fourier cos uh, sine series rather, all you need to find is the coefficient because nothing else is gonna change. So if we go back to the original formula that I wrote, x squared is gonna be the sum of all terms starting from n equals one of b sub n times sine n pi x. And we just got b sub n, so we say therefore, the Fourier series um, from zero to one, as expected in this problem, is x squared is equal to the sum from n equals one to infinity of this giant thing you're seeing here, which is negative two over n pi, negative one raised to power n plus four over n cubed pi cubed times negative one raised to power n minus one. Everything closed multiplied by sine n pi x. This is the Fourier sine series for f of x equals x squared. 
never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.